Hi, Marcel here to show you the new Grooms feature of Ornatrix version 4. In the new version of Ornatrix, if you press the quick hair button, you notice that now instead of directly adding the hair to the mesh, you now get a pop-up dialog with a few options inside of it. These are Grooms, and Grooms are presets that allow you to configure the modifier stack to contain various parametric operators which define a specific hairstyle. So, for example, if I click on the furball groom, I get my default furball as I always did, which contains a bunch of preset modifiers. And inside of these modifiers, there are some parameters which have been predefined for you. Likewise, I can go and apply a different groom to my mesh, for example, feathers, and I will get a completely different setup. So in this case, we get a different modifier stack, which has more modifiers in it, and the actual shape of each hair has been modified to be more feather-like. So in simplest terms, a groom is just a predefined set of modifiers with a set of parameters, which you can save and reuse later on. You can specify the directory of where the grooms are located by browsing, and by default, they are located in the Windows User Update plugin configuration directory. Each groom is a separate file with an aux groom extension and if we look inside the groom file you can see that it is just a simple xml file containing a stack element and then inside of it we have an operator on each line which might also have some predefined parameters so for example this is a render settings operator which has a specific radius and then it also has a predefined radius curve but you don't really need to know how to edit xml files because grooms can be generated directly inside 3ds max without ever having to touch any text editor. To demonstrate generating a groom, let me just get rid of my current setup and I'm just going to create something fresh. So I will create a default furball setup, but I might change some things about it. For example, I will add a frizz modifier to it and I'll change some parameters and maybe then I will also add some guide clustering on top of it. And maybe I'll just make it a little bit more visible and evident that we are clustering these nodes. So once you are done setting that up, you can use the generate groom button to specify the name of your groom. Let me just call this groom spiky. You can then specify the directory and the current directory is the default one for all grooms. And then you can also specify a thumbnail image. This image is optional, so you don't really need to have one. But if you do choose to add an image, you can select any 64 by 64 bitmap in PNG format. So I just created one here quickly. And there is also an option called base object is optional. If you check this option, then the groom will be transferable to any mesh or geometry inside of the scene. So I don't have to have a sphere to apply my spiky ball to. I can use a teapot or whatever else. Let me just leave this on and generate my groom. Once my groom is generated, I can now create some other object. For example, let's make a cylinder and I can apply my spiky groom to it. So as I apply my groom, you can see that all of the properties, including the clustering, the diagram, the positioning, everything transferred over to my cylinder. So this is just a quick and dirty demonstration of how to start using grooms to create assets out of your hair creations. And another thing I wanted to show is the fact that grooms are not only applicable to starting off with the mesh, but you can also use grooms to add hair to various other things supported by Ornatrix. So for example, if I select a shape instead of a mesh as my base object and I click on quick hair, now I have the hair from curves groom as an option instead of the fur ball. And if I create this groom and go to my modifier stack, I can see that this line automatically has the guides from shape, ground strands, and render settings above it, all of which are are part of the groom and ideally there would be more operators and I would ground this but I hope this gives you the idea of how grooms can be created from any type of modifier stack that you might have in production. So this was a super quick introduction to grooms using them and generating them from your assets. Sharing your grooms is as easy as sending these aux groom files to your friends and colleagues and inside the aux groom file the thumbnail is already embedded so you don't need to carry any other files just this one. Grooms will be an important staple in Ornatrix to create various hair assets and even share them between Max and Maya in the future. Thank you very much for watching.